keep finding ways that we're helping partners, finding either you know balance in their life or focus or purpose. Practices that are going to help improve your project management skills or your finances. We're here to talk about setting long-term goals and then how to achieve them. Increasing your quality, therefore becoming the best place in town to work. Welcome to Academy Live. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Academy Live. On today's show, we're going to be doing something just a little bit different. I'm going to spend the entire show talking about Bruno. That's right, NCE, the new commerce experience. I really wanted to really give the partners an idea of what you need to know about managing NCE right now. Um, I'll be talking to five of my colleagues from sales and support to get their perspectives. And I'm excited to get on with the topic today. So we're not going to waste any time. Um, for, let's uh, go ahead and bring up that quote of the day. Jordan Peterson, to master a new technology, you have to play with it, right? And if you look this up online, you'll see kind of kids playing on the table with, with the toys on the table and just trying to learn how to use them. And, you know, with co-pilot coming out and everything happening, I've had to remind myself, I got to get into these new tools, these new technologies, and just start playing with them. I got to click on the boxes. I got to learn just like I used to do when I was kind of that up and coming engineer uh, for my career. And there's new stuff coming. Uh, co-pilot kind of scared me a little bit, uh, but it, it's coming at us. It's coming at us fast. And the leaders are going to be the ones helping our, our partners and our, our end customers kind of leverage these tools. So anyway, good stuff. Great quote uh, by Jordan. Uh, I say we go ahead and bring on Joe Valpert from um, our sales organization to talk about what's like, we got this NCE moment coming up. Um, it comes at us every year now. This is our third run at it. Joe, uh, give us a little bit of a humble brag, introduce yourself, and, and let's talk about how the sales organization is being impacted by NCE and what you need our partners to know. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for that, Rex. Very happy to be here. My name's Joe Valbert. I am the manager of productivity solutions consultants here at PAX8. So really I dive deep into the Microsoft modern workplace and dynamics. Uh, I have been around with NCE since the first go around. So this is going to be my third year with NCE. And needless to say, I think we are finally in the position where it's not, let's not talk about Bruno. Let's discuss Bruno and come up with strategies on how to best interact with Bruno and to make this the most positive situation that we can. Yeah, um, I, I was really looking forward to, to doing this show to kind of have, have our partners understand kind of what we go through in the sales organization at PAX8. Like, you know, what, what, what are some of the things that just come to mind immediately when I say that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we really had to transition our complete way of doing business going from the month to month interactions with our partners and acquiring new clients to really coming up with a yearly strategy with them and getting behind them. And during this NC opportunity is really what we're working on and focused with our with our partners. One of the things that we really see with the sales organization during this time is folks waiting too late to have this conversation with us. It's a really important conversation that we need to start having. You know, quite frankly, if we're having it now, that's great. Um, but this is something we should start attacking a little bit earlier in the year and developing our strategies around what this is going to look like for the next year for you with your Microsoft practice. Generally, we see partners needing three areas on their sales cycle. Are you looking to grow your business? Are you looking to gain efficiencies? Or are you looking to reduce risk? Let's come up with a plan together to make this NC opportunity the most to maximize the business in your Microsoft wallet share with your clients that you can. I love that. I love that you know, grow revenue, gain efficiencies and reduce risk, right? That's so much, I mean, those are the three reasons that anybody moves on buying anything. Um, 
fill us in a little bit on kind of what this NCE window is. Like, when is the window? What's the, the Microsoft moment that, that we're kind of talking about? Yeah, so we generally are calling what is generally everybody's Q1, so January through March. Uh, the first year of when NC transaction happens, when the first NC transactions happened, um, most folks transitioned to new commerce experience licenses between the middle of January and the beginning of March. And so what we've now realized is this is the NC moment for y'all to be going out there. Um, if you're looking to acquire new clients, you should be getting these contracts ready for them and getting them into your ecosystem. This is also a great time to review contracts that you have with your existing clients. Are you looking to standardize on a certain type of SKU? Rex mentioned Copilot at the beginning of this, this podcast here, and that's going to be a big thing. AI is going to be a big part of your life, whether you're ready for it or not. And so that standardization conversation that you have with your clients is something that really needs to be focused on for y'all moving into this new year. Are you standardizing on those premium type SKUs to where you have the ability to manage data, where you have the ability to manage who's accessing what data in what types of situations is really going to be important for you to maximize this AI opportunity that's going to be a part of the Microsoft ecosystem and quite frankly already is. And so it's important right now when you are in this NCE moment to talk about that and figure that out. And if you don't know if yourself, if you yourself are ready for that, then we need to have a conversation to get you ready in the drink your own champagne type of situation. Microsoft was fortunate enough to release a couple new partner programs where there's no barrier to entry. And so with the lack of barrier to entry, you get five business premium licenses with one of those. And so we can start to help you out figuring out what that looks like. So then you can take it down to your clients. You know, um, we talked a little bit about reduced risk. And um, one of the things that, that was a hot topic three years ago was, well, my managed services offering just includes their Microsoft license. Um, and do I take the 20% premium hit on my cost and just buy, you know, it just have it cost me 20% more every month and stay on a monthly SKU? Or do I make the annual commit and me pay for it and carry carry the risk all year that I'm not going to lose a client, right? And um, I think a lot of a lot of partners kind of realize, well, I kind of have to redo that. It's not I can't carry that risk that I might lose the client. And they redid their contracts or renegotiated or pulled the the Microsoft 365 stuff out of their of their you know monthly managed services agreements or decoupled it a little bit. Um, you know, others just said, well, I guess I'm raising my prices. Uh, and I've been kind of surprised over the last, you know, maybe 45, 60 days or so uh, in like the Facebook, you know, MSP business owner groups that I monitor. There's a lot of confusion, a lot of questions still, and a lot of partners like coming to the conclusion right now that uh, most of the community came to a year ago. Um, are you guys getting calls? Are you having to talk to partners about anything like this? Yeah, absolutely. And it really depends on a case by case situation, but I can't speak to the trends that we've seen. And generally partners are going with Microsoft with the annual paid monthly version of the new commerce experience SKUs. It seems to be the most financial, uh, financially stable option for everybody as well as still getting though that not having to pay that 20% increase for the month to month flexibility. What we also see with businesses that are seasonal, uh, it's an interesting time, say a ski resort, where you have two different line items of say a business premium SKU, where you have those folks, those 20 people are gonna be there for the whole year. You're great, you're just gonna keep them on that. And then you can add a separate line item for month to month and pay that 20% increase on those who are coming in to be lifties. Uh, for the next little bit of time. And so that way you're not paying for that license for a full year. So it's really about knowing the partners that you're working with and how they are really doing business and finding out what solution is best for them. But I can't emphasize enough a standardization on a certain type of SKU. Um, and what's the sentiment in the partner community like they, everybody was pretty up in arms a couple of years ago. Um, are they kind of settling in that, well, this is more business as usual now, or 
are, you know, are you still finding a lot of partners that are discovering it? Uh, you know, kind of where, where is the partners as they're talking to our sales guys, gals? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a new world we're all living in. And I think we've all accepted that we are now working to where we see most of the contracts being written for Microsoft are going to be that annual type term and paid monthly. There is the annual paid annual option um, that we do see as well. But it is how we're doing business now in the Microsoft ecosystem. And as far as folks discovering it now at this point is not a conversation we're generally having in our day to day. We're more so focused on how to make the most of the situation we're given with these new licensing contracts. Um, and then we have a, a concept we call change a channel, right? That's where the one of our partners is currently getting their Microsoft from another marketplace. And then um, it, they're, They've been just waiting, waiting, waiting until the time when they can move it over. I, I'm sure we're losing some as well. Um, you know, what kind of thoughts do you have there? Yeah, uh, you know, that's a big portion of this NCE moment, as we're calling it, is, again, a lot of the clients when they transition to these new commerce experience licenses happen between the middle of January to the 1st of March. And so as you're going through and acquiring new clients throughout the year, this is generally the time that you're looking at seeing those licensing contracts come up with their existing distribution outlet. And so with that, it's that time where you need to be having those conversations about those licenses and what you're going to be doing to help them optimize their Microsoft practice to make sure they're making the most of everything they're purchasing through Microsoft. Um, a big portion of that stuff also leads into what you're looking for as far as their goals in 2024 and you and them working together as a business unit. And so it's just not the way it used to be, but it's something that we all work in now. Um, what, what, what are some things that you want the partners to know? Um, like, I, I want to make sure you have time to get out anything that you want to say. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, there's a lot of things to know about the new commerce experience. And some of the things are the easily avoidable mistakes when it comes to this moment that we have. And some of those mistakes we see are often user-based mistakes, unfortunately. Uh, people going too fast, provisioning the wrong amount of licenses, uh, using the wrong tenant ID when going through checkout and the licenses provision to a different tenant in, in total. And so when you're reaching out to our support folks and saying, hey, there's no licenses in this tenant, and let's say you have not done this within your seven-day window that you can make changes to an NCE subscription, it's not a great conversation for anybody to have. So I would say when you're approaching this time frame and you're looking at getting these licenses either purchased or renewed to really make sure you're paying attention to what you're doing and the amount of licenses you're purchasing, along with that, the tenant these licenses are going to, you're selecting the correct terms. Um, and another thing with the licenses is look at consolidation. And if you're concerned about any type of consolidation of licenses, uh, reach out to your account manager here at Pax8 because it's a conversation we should be having to make sure, A, you're not paying too much, but making sure that all the licenses that you have are the necessary licenses to perform the actions that you're looking to do within a client's Microsoft tenant. So I think one of the biggest things out there to get the message across is, A, take your time. If you're unsure of something, please reach out to your account manager. We're here to help. We want to make sure you're doing things correctly. Um, and then lastly, and I, our friends on support will probably touch on this quite a bit, during this NCE opportunity and the NCE moment that we will be facing, we're busy. Um, on the sales side, talking to partners, making sure everything is going good, but as well as APIs and provisioning, things run a little bit slower. And so if you don't see a license in, instantly provisioned like we're used to here through the Pax8 platform, give it a couple extra minutes. It's, it's working on the back end, but a little bit of patience throughout can ultimately help the entire partner ecosystem save time throughout this transition. Um, that that's such great in, in, intel. Um, I'm sure the support folks are going to talk about like the volume changes that happen during kind of this NCE silly season <laughs> with everybody, you know, moving licenses around between the CSPs that they're working with. Um, 
But one question I, I, I see, I hear come up a lot is maybe um, they're, somebody's gaining a new client and somebody's losing a new client. And if they're both in the Pax8 ecosystem, we can move it, right? Is that, but, but if they're outside the Pax8 ecosystem, we can't move it. Is that right? Yeah. Are you talking about during a contract? Yeah, in, during the contract. Yeah, there's generally some things we can do to help as long as there's two consenting parties to help make that transition on the back end. That's something that, again, reach out to your account manager to really dive into. Yeah, I, I guess I'll take it up with support. But I did, I did hear of a few instances where um, a acquiring uh, partner or was not a Pax8 partner. They they were getting a new client. The outgoing uh, partner was a Pax8 partner. So the the acquiring partner, the one getting a new client, signed up to be a Pax8 partner just so that it could be moved, right? Um, and then they got a pretty good experience, and then we start picking up more of their Microsoft business over you know over time. Are you guys seeing much of that? Yeah, I personally have not seen terribly too much of that. I think the new partners that we see coming in are generally more from the traditional process of going through the onboarding and bringing their clients over from another distribution outlet. Uh, an interesting situation and concept, though, to say the least, and that's something I would definitely want to hear and see a little bit more about. Well, there's a difference when you're working with the Pax8 marketplace. <laughs> um, so, no, this is this is great stuff. Um, in our last uh, minute together, is there anything else you want to get out there? Yeah. Um, you know, I really just want to finish up with the emphasis on standardizing on premium type SKUs with Microsoft. And the reason I really want to push that home to y'all is Copilot is here, Copilot is coming, and your clients are going to begin to ask you about this. And if you are not on the forefront of this, there are partners out there and MSPs out there that are the ones that are going out there and being on the forefront of the Copilot. And I've had the privilege to have a license myself for, uh, you know, it was in preview and it saved me hours in my day. And so if you're not looking to utilize it yourself, uh, I would look into that first and then bring it to your clients. Oh, that's fantastic. I, and uh, just a side note, within Pax8 Academy, if you go to academy.pax8.com and sign in, uh, our co-pilot uh, on-demand courses, the free on-demand courses are hot right now. I, I think we're kind of approaching about 400 different consumptions of those free on-demand courses about co-pilot. So if you're wondering, that's some great a great place to uh, you know pick up some knowledge. So... Joe, thank you so much uh, for joining us and representing kind of the channel account manager CAM perspective uh, for our partners. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the support side of our organization now, and let's bring on Nate and Gwen. So Thanks, I'm going to have uh, Nate, or Dust, sorry, Dustin Jonathan coming on now. Uh, come on, Dustin and Jonathan. So, um, I'm gonna kind of start with Dustin. Why don't I have you uh, do a little humble brag, introduce yourself, and then we'll hop over to Jonathan. Yeah, yeah. Hey everyone, uh, thanks for having me, Rex. I'm Dustin Bastine, one of the directors of technical support here at Pax8. I get the pleasure of working breakfix tech support for our Microsoft uh, support organizations. Uh, Jonathan, go ahead. Yeah, my name is Jonathan Demlo. Uh, I am the director of our service delivery. Um, my team is responsible for looking after all things orders, so whether that be an API um, error or a manual process, along with the mani manipulation of orders, so change of channel, migrations. Um, so we do all things orders. Right on. I, um, yeah, this, shows, this show, I'm just so excited about it because I got some sales, I've got some support view here uh, from two different uh, groups within support. So um, I, you know, before I before I jump in, is there uh, anything, I'll, Jonathan? I'll start with you. Is there anything you want to get out there? <laughs> um, yeah, get ready. It's gonna be a crazy time. February and March are uh, are big, big seasons. So we're looking at you know potentially over a million cases running through our system. So huge load on our system, huge load load on the team. 
we've seen you know doubling in uh, cases over year over year. So uh, it's going to be a big lift. We're going to see a lot of cases. So uh, be patient. We'll get to it. But uh, yeah, that's that's the big thing. Can bring some context to that over a million cases. Like what's a what's a normal load? Yeah, I mean. You know, we get a, a thousand here, a hundred here. Um, when we have these renewals, right, we're hitting these annual renewal periods coming up in February and March is this is when they rolled it out. And so everybody got on the bandwagon all at once. And so there's a huge surge of these cases to the point where um, it not only crashed our system, but it also crashed Microsoft's system where first year we hit it, we hit them with millions of orders along with everybody else. So uh, it's a big load on everybody's system. and uh, it, quite a lot. So so it's not just our systems running slow. We're waiting on the responses from Microsoft. Is that what I'm hearing? Yep. yep. Um, it, it's, it's a two-sided street. Um, I think last year we had issues where they potentially were spinning up servers to kind of take on the load and some things happen and we are waiting um, many, many hours for just to get a response back of was it successful or not. So it's a waiting game in a lot of sense, uh, but yeah, a lot of traffic. Uh, I remember that first year we were thinking, you know, after waiting an hour, we're like, I guess it didn't go through. So we do another request and then, then they would both go through eventually. And then we had to undo stuff. Um, it, it was, it was frustrating. The, the ripple effect, right? It's um, okay. It spun up two. Now we have a project that we have to clean up. Oh, but wait, we're locked in because of NCE. And so it's this very time sensitive motion that it's an all, all hands on deck scenario. Um, and it's uh, important to realize that those dates really matter now. Um, those those timelines, they're not uh, a legacy anymore. We're, we're locked in and we have to be careful about those things. There was um, a moment I was at um, sales kickoff a while back. I remember we were over at Comedy Works and um, we paraded uh, after the kind of the whole Bruno thing was all over on that first round, we paraded. <laughs> Um, the entire support organization out on stage and they got a, a standing ovation. You know, can either one of you guys speak to that? Justin, you want to yeah, take that? I can, yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was an incredible first year. It really stressed us, uh, put us through the test. Um, you know, what what we knew how to, to run a support org, I think was really challenged during that time. Uh, those teams that uh, were up on stage and got that applause, they. They, they were used to, you know, 1,000, 1,500 cases a month. And within two months, we had, we had seen uh, 10,000 plus uh, support cases. And, um, and, you know, we're all pitching in. I mean, I, I remember that first weekend I worked with my colleague, Fernando Del Valle, came in on the weekend. We were basically working until we woke up until at night just to get responses out to say, hey, yeah, we're here. We hear you. We're listening. We're working on it. Um, and I mean, right then it was crunch time. Like uh, uh, it took, I think we were at three day cancellation terms, right? Um, they ex later on expanded that to seven days, but uh, it was it was crunch time for everyone. Just trying to make sure that we hit that window for our partners, for their customers. And the people on those teams just really poured every ounce of energy that they had into making sure that our partners had the licenses as quickly as possible. Uh, really powerful for us, but we made it through. Were there any key kind of lessons learned um, after that first year? It seemed like last year was a, a little bit smoother. It was a lot better. Um, a lot more communication between me and Jonathan here, uh, dev side, um, you know, having daily meetings on, okay, well, what are we seeing on the back end? How is it going to affect the front end? How is it going to affect our frontline workers? And what do we need to empower them to be able to say so that we can get these responses out as quickly as possible and have meaningful updates rather than just say, sorry, we don't know. Actually, this is what we know. Please be patient. You know, this is what we're working on. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know, Jonathan, do you have anything you wanted to add on that? It's a uh, continued improvement, right? Each year we, we improve upon the last. And so we're looking at making it more efficient to uh, in, in, internally make sure that those cases are being flown between the, the different departments and different groups make sure they're getting handled appropriately and on time um, we're you know making sure that we can uh, our apis are strong we're testing those beforehand um, we're, we're hammering microsoft making sure they can hammer you know take on that load so 
it's a lot of prep. We, we keep fixing things that went bad in last year and keep improving. So I'm hopeful for this year, uh, less of a load, you know, knock on wood, but uh, uh, I'm excited for it. Seems like last year, Microsoft was making changes to APIs and things right up, right up until the middle of the game. Um, I, does it seem like things have settled down for this year? Yeah, we, you know, it was a bit of catch up. Uh, Microsoft dropped this on us and we said, oh, oh, we got to get going. Uh, so it was all hands on deck across PAX 8 to get this thing launched. And now we're in the point of making sure that those APIs are robust and they're, they are modifying them and improving them like version one, version two. So those endpoints are becoming a little bit more robust um, and a little bit more uh, strong so we can, you know, not avoid any downtime or uh, errors. Um, what happened? I want to hit on this modification window of yeah. three days um, question. Um, whichever one of you thinks you can tackle that one. And then I have one. Uh, Go for it, Justin. Question. Yeah. Uh, the cancellation window. Yes. So it, when they first rolled out NCE, you had three days or 72 hours and you made your order to say, nope, I don't want that order, or I need to take, make a quantity adjustment with a prorated charge. Um, obviously, it was with all the errors, three days just was not enough. I can't remember, I think it was maybe a month in, they changed it to seven days, and that is the de facto standard now. Um, that is your locked in commitment date. Uh, and I think, you know, talking back to what Joe was you know, saying earlier, is really having that good conversation with your customer really understanding uh, what your customer needs and having that, you know, I mean, this is a great chance to have a, a real talk with your customer and say, what do you guys need? What are you planning for this next year? And uh, making sure the licenses count, license counts uh, match with what they need. And uh, we always say go, to, uh, go slow to go fast around here. So I, I offer that same, like make sure we're ordering on the right tenant, if you have the right quantity, you know, really double check and get that in, and then you really shouldn't have any problems beyond that. I think a lot of the tickets that we get are, oops, I forgot, wrong tenant, you know, like, hey, you order it, the provisioning, check, check in the tenant. Are they there? You see them. If you don't see them, open up a ticket. Hey, I ordered this, what's going on? You know, but um, I think uh, that ounce, uh, ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Yeah. Uh in the road racing world we say slow is smooth and smooth is fast so uh go slow go. to go fast i i, I uh, totally agree with that and i gotta tell you with my on track time the way i got faster was learning how to use my brakes better <laughs> just a total <laughs> side note um totally so um i'm wondering about the relationship between you know pax 8 engineering the, the, you know the the crew that's writing the code and support right uh, can you kind of tell me a little bit about that relationship and how that's going and maybe some things we're doing differently, you know, as we head into third year of NCE? Yeah, we, we stay pretty close with uh, Dev, especially on the service delivery side. Um, we are very close in communication. So we, I kind of consider us a production level QA. So we're the first to see when something breaks in production. Um, so we have a direct line of communication to Dev and, uh, any other organization that needs to jump on it and get it fixed. Um, but it's a series of bug fixes and feature requests and things to prove, right? Incrementally throughout the year is getting these things fixed so that um, it doesn't reoccur, it doesn't keep repeating itself, right? Insanity. Um, and so we're, we're in direct communication with them and we, we stay close. So, um... I don't know. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm here to be your cheer, cheerleader, right? Like, like the, this uh, NCE, the toughness, everybody waiting till the last minute to get those orders in is, is coming at us fast. Uh, so I'm going to encourage our partners out there. If you know something's coming, get that, get that order in as quick as possible um, so that you can avoid that little surge at the end. Um, is there anything else, uh, um, Dustin, you want to, you want to get out there? Uh, again, just want to reiterate, this is a great time to have that combo with your customer. Uh, this is a great time to, uh, and, and there's also tons of resources. I mean, 
there's an NCE handbook out there. There's an FAQ. And, uh, you know, Joe Valbert's team is awesome at answering a lot of these questions. Uh, the entire sales floor is there to help. Uh, and it, when things break, uh, our team is there to help. So, um, yeah, that's all, I think that's all I have, John. Uh, again, I reiterate the uh, being patient with not only our APIs and our systems, um, chunking away at them, but also be patient with support. You know, we, we do see it. We are monitoring it. We'll get to it. Um, but, yeah. Get, get them in as soon as you can. Um, those dates are, you know, critical. So be patient. Man, that's awesome. I'm hoping the, the partners are picking up what you guys are laying down uh, because this is this is so so important to, you know, the partners got to be on top of what's going on with their their customers. They need to be talking about, you know, growing revenue, um, increasing efficiency, and reducing risk with their partners. And if they're doing that, they can have those same conversations with our CAMs. And, and that way it doesn't become this kind of gold rush right at the end. So um, ho hopefully we get that done. You guys have been great. I, I want to thank both of you for coming on the show. Um, and um, Willis, if you're ready, I, I'd like to uh, move over to Nate and Gwen. Look at that. Ah, ta -da. Okay. Um, Nate, why don't you go first? Give us, give, give us a little, uh, humble brag of why you're here. Fantastic. Thanks for having me on. My name is Nate Chandler. I work on the service delivery team with a productivity specialty under Jonathan Demlo. I don't know that I could give a better description of what service delivery does, except for we turn services on and turn services off. Generally that's automated when it's not, I'm there to fix it. Yeah, I've definitely got some questions for you about that. What you got, Gwen? Great. Uh, hi, I'm Gwen Sarkman. I'm an L3 on the service desk orders and billing team. Um, I've been here three years, so I've lived the NCE life along with the partners this long, uh, this long time. So uh, yeah, I have a lot to, to teach and we've learned a lot over the last three years, so. You guys, I asked them for some talking points and I, there's like a three page word document here. So we're going to dive into it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with Nate uh, to talk about like, what are you guys dealing with with these commitment windows? And, you know, what do you need us to know? Yeah, the, the biggest thing I need our partners to know is that Microsoft takes the commitment windows very seriously. There's two different commitment windows, monthly and annual. Monthly commitments may only be paired with monthly billing, while annual commitments may be paired with either annual or monthly billing. As was referenced earlier, there's a modification window once the partner orders the product. This modification window is 167 hours long, or about seven days, as it stands right now. That used to be different, but thankfully we have a lot longer than three days. And think of this as like a countdown once the subscription is provisioned to make any modifications, cancel it, or decrease the quantity before it's locked in for its commitment term. Microsoft has a very strict no exceptions cancellation policy outside the seven day window. So it doesn't matter if you made a mistake, if your customer stops paying you, or even bankruptcy. Microsoft still says, nope, the commitment's the commitment. You got to meet that. A commitment is a commitment. So don't click it wrong when you're placing the order. You've got, and I love this. I hadn't realized it's 167 hours. Um, and I, when does it, when does that um, 167 hours start? I, I would imagine we're coming down to the minutes and when we're arguing with Microsoft sometimes. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it starts right when the subscription is provisioned. So if it gets provisioned via the API, minutes after you click the order button in the Pax8 marketplace. Um, I, I kind of like, I believe I'm reading in between the lines here. There's not much Pax8 can do to help once, once, once that commitment is made. Correct. Yeah. Uh, once the modification window closes, that's it. There's no, there's nothing we can really do outside of that 
modification window. Yeah. Yeah. So hear that loud and clear. So Gwen, um, looks like you would like to talk about some important dates for the subscription. You, you want to drop some knowledge on us? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. The most important thing is to be prepared and to know your subscriptions and what each date means and everything like that. So once your subscription provisions into the Pax8 marketplace, um, there's kind of three dates that you'll have to follow. The most important one is the commitment end date, and I'll even say that commitment end date, the specific dates, usually a year or a month from when you ordered it. Um, and that is the commitment that you'll have to, you know, use your subscription through. Um, and so that is also when the renewal starts. So once it renews, you got that seven days, it locks in again for your next year or month commitment. Um, then there's also the billing renewal, um, which is when the billing renews in PAX 8. But sometimes partners can mix those up. So commitment, that's when you're licensing. That's when you should be following. And then the billing renewal is usually on the first of the month as we bill ahead. And then there's the start date, which is obviously your most obvious one, which is the effective date of your most recent order. So just kind of understanding those and tracking those um, is super important for partners to have the best uh, subscription management experience. And and that's why we're saying that there's January, February, you know, there, there's this NC window is a renewal. If you place the order one year ago at the beginning of the window, it's renewing at the beginning of the window, right? You, you don't have until the next, whenever NCE ended, right? Right, yeah. Is so that it's a, that are first people order, about that? The first date. Yeah, we've seen that a lot, which is um, kind of where we're kind of uh, making sure people know the basics, because once you know the basics, then you can kind of build on that. But yeah, just definitely keeping in mind that commitment end date um, is when you're going to want to either reduce or cancel um, and when that renews again. So how does a partner know, and I, I'm sorry, I just don't know the answer to this one. How does a partner know that they've got this set of clients that, you know, it, expiring in the first week of January and this other set in the first week of February and stay on track on top of that? Yeah, luckily, um, PAX8 has done something really cool where they've created the NCE tracker, which is a tool in the PAX8 marketplace where um, they can pull all their subscriptions across all their companies and um, it will pull their renewal dates so they can kind of keep that track and then also download it as a CSV and just have that. Um, they can also see it in their subscription order page as well and kind of track it. So PAX8 has really made the move to make it easy for partners to kind of track that and know what's coming up so they can be prepared. Yeah, I, I didn't realize we had a subscription tracker. Uh, um, I hope everybody's checking that at the beginning of every week so they know who they need to be talking to and make sure they got those final commitments. Right, That's one of those reducing risk um, things that the partner uh, needs to be thinking about. Love that. Um, anything else on important dates or should we move to Nate? All good. All right, Nate, you're up. Let's talk about renewals. Like, like what kind of renewals issues are hitting the support desk these days? Oh, there's always issues with renewals. People look at, so what Gwen already touched on is the billing renewal date is completely separate from the commitment term end date, which is the actual renewal of the commitment. And when that commitment term ends, the subscription renews at midnight UTC that day. Now, for those of us in mountain time, United States, that's minus six or minus seven hours, depending on if we're in daylight saving time or not, from UTC. So five or six in the evening is when that subscription renews on the day its commitment term ends. When the subscription is renewing, it may be locked for 24 hours while this renewal takes place. This is normal. This is expected. This is enforced by Microsoft. There's nothing that Pax8 can do to make this renewal, 24 hours, go faster. Just note, if you're trying to put in a modification while the subscription is trying to renew, it may error out. If that's happening, just sit back, 
wait for a couple hours, try again. If that still doesn't work, please wait at least 24 hours before opening a case with Pax8 because if it's within the if it's renewing, actively renewing, we can't do anything except wait with you. Now that's at the beginning of, of when it becomes available to renew or or right or at, at... Yep. So the commitment term end date. On that date, at midnight UTC, the renewal starts. And then 24 and then you've hours got a from window. there. From yep. that, Once the this process finishes, occurs, those... might be locked for an hour, and then we got the seven-day window. That's right. That's right. Okay. Well, after the renewal happens, the modification window opens back up for another about seven days. Okay. And that, that, that's going to be about seven or eight mountain um, PM? Yeah. So it on depends on if it's, if it's, if we're in daylight savings time, because mountain time is generally minus seven from UTC, which I believe puts it at 5 PM, but yeah. that can shift an hour depending on daylight savings time or not. Yeah. And this is one year from whenever they place the order. The NCE moment just happens to be so many NCE orders were placed right in January and February. Yep. Right. Renewals happen. The annual is the big one because it's seven hours to modify your annual sub, but renewals happen to both annual commitment and monthly commitment subscriptions. So make sure that you notice when your subscription is renewing, no matter the commitment term, and then you, you'll have those seven days to modify it after them. Got it. Anything else on uh, renewals that, you know, support gets hammered got it on? For me. Okay. Well, then Gwen, you're back up. If you haven't noticed, there's sort of yeah. a rotation order here. Yeah. So Gwen, yeah, upgrades like and downgrades. <laughs> What's happening with upgrades yeah. and downgrades? Right. So yeah, upgrades. Um, there's kind of two types of upgrades. There's a subscription SKU upgrade, and then there's a commitment upgrade. Um, a subscription SKU upgrade, say that five times fast, uh, is when you move from a your current SKU to a higher tiered, higher price SKU, and you usually get more benefits and things like that. Well, a commitment upgrade is when you go from monthly to annual. So both of those, um, you're able to kind of press a button in PAX 8, and it will build that out um, and change that SKU for you automatically. Um, and you can also choose to either do a full upgrade, so upgrade all your licenses or do a partial upgrade. Uh, the super important note on that that we have had partners kind of fall into is that um, upgrading does not create a new renewal or modification window. So once you upgrade, you are locked in. And um, that does not make some partners happy as we understand, because sometimes you click it too fast, like we've said before, or it wasn't the right SKU that you were looking for. So um, we definitely suggest like making sure you talk to your account team before kind of messing with any of those upgrade things, uh, because otherwise you'll be locked in and Microsoft is very strict and will keep you in that higher tiered SKU. So there is no kind of downgrades or like unupgrading anything like that. Um, so until, yeah, just definitely annual, understanding that. Until the end of right. the commitment, whether it's a monthly or an annual commitment, right? You're, you're kind of stuck. Until that That's seven that. day window opens up again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And spending time, the partner spending time understanding these things, right, is part of that reducing risk. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we've learned a lot over the last um, three years. So it's helped us um, make sure we don't have those same mistakes. So it's the same with the partner. Now that we have that knowledge, we want to pass it along and make sure that they're prepared as well. Yeah, I love it when Microsoft has a thing like that. We're doing our best to help our partners and, and uh, engage them. And then they go on Facebook and say, Pax 8's terrible. They won't let me out of this commitment. <laughs> Don't you love that? <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. They get mad at us, but we're in it with them. That's like what we like to say with partners. Like we understand the frustrations with Microsoft at times that we're there along with you where sometimes it doesn't make sense. But um, just kind of understanding is the best move forward and preparing yourself. Yeah. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast when you're when you're uh, clicking inside the marketplace. So, Nate, I'm going to yeah. toss back to you. Um, let's talk about trials, free trials. 
Oh, absolutely. Who doesn't like talking about free stuff? So Microsoft <laughs> offers free trials on some, but not all of their offerings. These trials have a quantity of 25, almost always 25. And these, you get these licenses for about 30 days. Now, you get to try it out completely free, no commitment. But once those 30 days are up, the trial is going to auto-convert at a quantity of 25. No matter how many license are, licenses are being used, it's just 25. And Pax8 steps in to make sure that these licenses are converted to a monthly commitment at 25. But if you don't want 25 licenses or you've gone 15 days and you're like, yes, I love this. I know I want it. It's on a day I want the renewal to happen on a yearly or monthly cycle. I'm going to go ahead and convert this. You can convert them before the 30 days is up. And when you convert it, you get to pick the commitment term, you get to pick the billing term, and you get to pick the quantity. And once you have that all set up, you can submit that and it'll convert to a paid subscription and you'll be able to enjoy your, this service for as long as you want it. So a partner can give any individual customer a 30 day trial of almost anything. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And then they just have to be careful when they convert it or it will auto convert. Um, if it auto converts, is there a seven day grace period in there or is there, it final? There is. There's a seven day modification window on both auto conversions and manual conversions. Either, either way, the, the seven day window opens back up. Hmm. There's nothing easy in the world that Microsoft can't complicate, right? <laughs> so for sure. Um, <laughs> Uh, anything else on the free trials? That that sounds pretty straightforward. That's all I so, have. Gwen, back to you. Um, let's talk about add-ons. Yeah, so add-ons um, are an individual subscription, but it needs a parent or base subscription to function. So um, this is where we also see some confusion with partners because there needs to be a valid parent subscription somewhere in the Microsoft tenant. Um, it can be Pax8, another distributor, Microsoft Direct, but you have to make sure that it is the valid parent. Um, so that is super important to understand. And then um, because they're attached, the it's best practice to make sure the commitment end dates align because if you have an add-on, that might have a longer commitment and you want to cancel that parent subscription. That's where kind of confusion happens um, and where there's kind of maneuvering that has to happen. So it makes the most sense when, you know, they're just aligned and then you don't really have to worry about that. But um, if you do want to cancel that parent subscription, um, your kind of options are reassigning it to another parent subscription or canceling that add-on first and then canceling the parent subscription. So just keeping that in mind when um, partners are doing that subscription management and ordering those licenses. Just out of curiosity, are there are there tech notes about this that we can find someplace in the PAC8, PAX8 ecosystem or marketplace or support? Like, is it are these things that we're talking about on the show, are they documented somewhere? Yes, actually, I was going to bring that up later, but uh, there's actually oh. an NCE blog on the PAX 8 website. So that is a great like one stop shop for all the um, information that we have here, especially um, and just like best practices as well and kind of upcoming things that might uh, be changing like the legacy to NCE migration and things like that. So that's all available um, on that NCE right. blog, which we send out on the service desk team daily to partners and it's a super helpful resource yeah i didn't realize that was on page 12 of the document here so we'll get back to that one okay. um, <laughs> nate uh, you were looking to talk about some provisioning uh delays and errors um what do you got absolutely. for absolutely yeah so provisioning that's my thing being on service delivery there's many many things i could say about it but just a couple of notes that i want to really impress during our time now is during high volume times, especially like we're going to see coming up in March, there's going to be a ton of orders coming in and we have the vast majority of orders automated. 
But as with any I've percentage, heard some, um, I've heard some amazing uh, percentages. Like, like what what percentage of the orders that come through are automated that don't require your team to kind of help them? Oh, what was it? I ninety seven or ninety eight percent of the Microsoft orders that come in are completely automated. No person touches them at all. So we're talking about two or three percent of these Microsoft orders that even need my team's attention. So vast, vast majority of them go through automatically. That's awesome. Okay, I'll let you let you get back to it. Yeah. So with my team dealing with this, these two or three percent during high ticket times, high traffic times, lots of orders coming in, you probably as partners understand when these times are because you're placing orders then too. Is end of the month, beginning of the month, Monday mornings, people coming in and or making their orders for the week. These are high volume times for us. And so I just ask that during these high traffic times, you just give us a few extra minutes before reaching out up to an hour, give us some time. We're in the queue. We see the ticket. We're getting to them as fast as we can. We want to get these done to get you the services that you need. And just please be patient with us. And most of the time, the delays aren't us. It's like we're dealing with with the Microsoft systems that are um, being slow in giving result codes back so we can know that it was successful, right? So. Oh, yes. A lot of times Microsoft errors out and all that I have to do is go in and rerun and make sure that it's all working properly. Very cool. So what were those day times again? I heard Monday mornings. Um, what are some of the, the other of the times where beginning we of the month. things to be slow? When? when? Yep. Monday mornings, end of the month, and beginning of the month. Those are the big high traffic times for us. Awesome. Awesome. So Gwen, uh, back to resources. Uh, we already talked about the NCE blog, um, but we got a couple other things uh, in here. So drop some knowledge. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, definitely be sure to check out that NCE blog. Um, read through that. I mentioned it before that NCE tracker is going to be your best friend to like really keep track of those commitment end dates and know um, where your subscriptions and what they're looking at. And then um, also the best resource is gonna be your account team. They're there to help you out um, for any like licensing and you know uh, pricing questions. So definitely the best advice is use all the resources um, under your control. And there's also like Microsoft kind of docs that they have out there. Um, but that's something that we can kind of help on the support side as well. But yeah, just being super prepared. That's all we can really ask for um, as we navigate this. Um, what's the best way to get support? Um, is there like a preferred method where the partner is going to get the fastest help? Yeah, so there's our support line that partners can call in um, if they need that immediate assistance. And then there's obviously the, the tickets. Um, our team has grown so much over the last three years. It's um, awesome to see. We've kind of went from maybe an eight to nine person team to we're hitting 2025. So service desk has really grown. Provisioning has really grown. The whole PAX 8 has really grown with this whole um, experience. So we've really stepped up to um, make sure that we're able to help partners when they reach out. That's that, that's exciting. Um, I know PAX eight is known for, you know, the support experience. It's, it's, it's one of the, one of the things we hang our hat on and you guys are just kicking butt over there. And we certainly, certainly, certainly appreciate it, um, in the rest of PAX eight, but I think our partners appreciate it even more. Um, Nate, do you have any, any thoughts you want to toss in in the last minute or two? Oh, I just want to say thank you for having me on. This has been a great time to be here and share the knowledge I have. Hopefully this helps some of our partners because that's really what I, I want to be on support of PAX is I just want to be helpful to our partners, help them get the services that they need, help them to get the knowledge that they need to have. And if that happens, I've done my job. Yeah, I love that. Mic um, drop. <laughs> yeah. Well, we should just end the show now. No, thank, yeah. thank you guys. Um, uh, that was that was fantastic. Great information. Um, this is going to live on. I, I hope it gets a ton of views. Um, remember to like and subscribe. 
Um, I think uh, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the final thoughts segment of the show. All right, there it is. The NCE moment. We talked about Bruno. Um, I'm excited that uh, hopefully there was something in here for everybody. There's a lot going on in the product dev side, trying to keep up with what's going on, you know, from Microsoft and, and the needs of the partners. Uh, I know we have a lot of stuff in Academy. Go to academy.pax8.com. We've got the, the, you know, the NCE hub with just chock full of information. There's the NCE blog on the Pax8 website. Um, in, you know, and if you have any kind of questions, reach out to support, reach out to the folks in Academy because we want to find those answers for you. Um, we are your, your partner in working through this. Um, it's the third year. We're hoping it's a little bit easier on all of us. Um, make sure you are thinking about growing revenue, uh, increasing efficiency and reducing risk as you're designing your products and services and the way you service your customers. So just super excited. Um, and with that, um, let's move on to the outro. So again, thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to tune in next week. We're going to be talking to partners um, in business and in life, uh, couples that work together, kind of an homage to Valentine's Day. So uh, go ahead um, and you know make sure you sign in for that. Remember, uh, every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Mountain, on demand always. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, and as always, please think about what you're going to do differently tomorrow to grow your business. Thanks, everyone.